So today we're going to build up on the work we did in the previous video in terms of adding and subtracting fractions. So in the last video, we looked at fractions which have the same denominator. And we found that these weren't too problematic to add up. They, they made intuitive sense because in a sense, the, the fractions were kind of communicating well. They, they had the same denominator. They were looking at that same sort of space. So it was easier to add these up. Now we're going to move to some more problematic examples. So here I have what happens when we add a third to a half. Now, it's kind of hard to do this, right? Where we have, I've drawn two fraction squares here and we're adding one that's been split into three bits and one that is split into two bits. So these aren't really communicating well. They're almost not speaking the same language, right? This one, is in a kind of weird orientation and it's split into three and this one into half, but it ends up being not too bad by the time we actually see what's happening here. Now, these two are kind of in different orientations, right? But what if there was a way we could make these speak the same language? And a way to do this, imagine if I took my fraction square on the left and I spliced through my one on the right and I kind of almost superimposed them. So by superimposed, I mean laying one directly on top of another. Now what we would get, and I'm gonna draw these just to save a bit of time. If I were to move this one over to my fraction square on the left, this middle line here would splice through here, right? So what we're gonna get is we're gonna get our original third here, but with our dividing line of two cut between here. And the same, the same area is gonna be shaded. You can see I've got the same bit shaded as, as the top to the bottom. And now we're gonna be adding, sorry, let me do this in black. To that, we are gonna be adding our fraction square on the right, but when we overlay our left one. So we're still gonna have our half here. Apologies for the bad drawing and the lack of straight lines, but hopefully you see where I'm getting at. And this is gonna cut through here, right? Now, by doing this, think about how many portions have we split each of these into? You should see these look a lot more similar now because they have been both split into six parts, six equal portions. So we're gonna now just write equivalent fractions. Well, we, we can just read it off, can't we? So we have here that now there's two of these red shaded squares out of the total of six that we have in total. And you can see a third and two sixths are equivalent fractions. And from our half, now three make up our total of six squares. And essentially, now these look like the fractions we've been working in in our previous video. And now that the denominators are the same, we can just add the numerators like we would have in our previous examples. So we get five out of six. And we could, we could, I can just show it up here actually in a second. So by adding these two, I can say, well, okay, we have two more red squares there and there. And that makes up 
five out of my six. So that's where we get this particular answer. So I hope that, I hope you're with me so far. I hope that all makes sense. I'm gonna do one more example, but with subtracting fractions now. And this is gonna be a bit of a trickier one, but I'm gonna draw two fraction squares. And I wanna be adding, I wanna be adding five, oh, well, I wanna be subtracting from five sixths, I wanna subtract three eighths. Okay, this is our second example, EG2. Now, let's actually draw these fraction squares out. So for our five sixths, Sorry, you can see I've just given up on trying to draw these nicely. I hope the idea still the idea still remains. We have one, two, three, four, five. We have five sixths. And from that, we're gonna subtract. Let me shade these in first, actually. That would be wise. And we have this here. We have five sixths of our first fraction square shaded. And in our second one, we have eight. Eight portions and three of these are shaded in. So we have one, two, three, four, whoops, five, six, seven, and eight. Now let's get these in a different color. I'll do yellow. Now, I, I know it looks a bit weird on the on the drawing, but hopefully you're you're following um, following where I'm where I'm getting at. And what are we going to do here? Let's just overlay these two in the same way, and we should get. Well, we're going to still have our five here. One, two, three. Oh, sorry, six, four, five, six. And we're gonna have, by the when we kind of superimpose these, we're gonna have eight bits here. So we get one, two, three, four. Ooh. And five, six, seven, eight. There we go. So let's shade in our original. Five that we had. And we're going to subtract from that these from here. So we'll draw this again. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to have eight. Here. Cool. And we can essentially now just count how what what the equivalent fraction is, what what proportion of this new sort of grid our shaded area makes up. So on this one, we have 40 out of 48, and from that we're subtracting 18 out of 48. So we're eventually gonna end up with 22 over 48. And let's leave it here. We can, we can simplify this as well, but the main thing I wanna get at is this kind of intuitive process of overlapping our fractions here. We had a simpler example up here and we were able to express our original fractions as equivalent fractions, but just in a sort of bigger space. Well, not a bigger space, but with more parts. And you'll notice, so here, instead of three parts, we had six. And instead of two parts, we had six again. And the pr actual procedure that we're doing here 
is we're finding the lowest common denominator. So we're finding a denominator. Now, in this case, it wasn't necessarily the lowest common because we can simplify it, but we're finding a number that both of our denominators here go into. So here, this was six on both. And here, we could have gone a bit simpler, which when we actually, now that we've established that we're looking for a lowest common denominator, we can just do this quickly and kind of arithmetically in our head. But this is just a visual intuitive example for how we can deal with fractions. And fraction squares are a very powerful way to show this. You can do this at home with actual bits of paper and you can overlay them if you'd like. But hopefully the drawings here all made sense. And here we had, we had 48, which is a number that both six and eight go into. So I hope that all made sense. And we're gonna keep working through the other methods of multiplying and dividing fractions in future videos. I'll see you there.